Asparsha Yogo Namaisha Durdarsha Sarva Yogi Vihi Yogi no Bibhyati Yasmad Abhaye Bhayadarshinaha This identification with the ungrasped and ungraspable reality is difficult to achieve. They are indeed seeing fear in the fearless. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is known in the Upanishads as Asparsha Yoga. Text 30 Bhagavat Puja Padascha Shukshatarka Patunamun Ahura Madhyamikan Brantan Achintyesmin Sadatmani The highly respected Bhagavat Pada Shankara also refers to the Madhyamakas, experts in dry ratiocination, contradicting the Vedic view, as confused regarding the self-existent Brahman who is beyond thought. Text 31 Anadritya shruting maurkya dime baudhasta pasvinaha Ape dire niratmatvam anumanaika chakshushaha. These Buddhists, merged in darkness and seeing through the one eye of inference and neglecting the authority of the Veda, reached only the nothingness. Text 32. Shunyama siditi bruse sadyogang vasadatmatam. Shunyasya natutadyuktam ubhayang vyaha tatvataha. We ask the Buddhists, when you say nothing existed in Shloka 26, did you mean it, nothing was connected with existence, sat, or it, nothing was of the nature of existence? In either case, its nothingness is contradicted. If nothing is accepted as existence, it is no more nothing. The opposition argument is, in the beginning, that is, before creation, there was nothing. In the end, that is, after pralaya, dissolution, there will be nothing. So the things that appear in the middle, that is, for the duration of creation, are deceptive. They do not really exist. They only appear to be existing. The Vedantin's counter-argument is, you said nothing existed. What do you mean by that? You predicate something about nothing. Now, predication may be of two kinds only. One, about the nature of the thing predicated, or two, about something else in connection with the thing predicated. If your predication is of the first kind, then existence becomes the nature of nothing, which, of course, you do not mean. If, again, your predication indicates some kind of relation, then the relation must be between two things, in which case also your nothing is converted into a thing, which you do not desire. So, nothing existed is a contradiction in terms. Text 33 Na yukta stamasa suryo na picha sautamo mayaha such chunya your virodhitvach chunyamasita katang vada. The sun does not have the attribute of darkness nor is it itself of the nature of darkness. As existence and non-existence are similarly contradictory, you cannot predicate something about nothing, 
So how do you say nothing existed? Text 35. Via dader namarupe mayaya sati kalpite shunyasya namarupe cha tatache jivatang chiram. The Buddhists retort, According to you Vedantins, the names and forms of Akasha and other elements are conjured up by Maya in or on Sat, the existence or reality. Similarly, according to us, they, names and forms, are elusively produced by Maya in or on non-existence, Asat. Reply. Our answer is, may you live long. That is, you have fallen into a logical trap. Akasha, etc., cannot exist without the substratum of Brahman. And if nothing is also like that, then it also has a real substratum, and you accept the Vedantic position. Text 35 Satopi nama rupe dve kalpite cheta davada kutreti niradhishtano na brahma kvachadikshyate. If you affirm that name and form attributed to an existing thing are both creations of Maya, an illusory principle, then tell us what is the substratum upon which Maya creates names and forms, for illusion without a substratum is never seen. If Sat is the substratum, it is no more illusion. Non-existence can never be a substratum. The world cannot be a substratum for Sat, because it is created later. The fourth alternative also is not possible for illusion without a substratum is never seen. Namaste. So, the Buddhists are confused about the ultimate reality. Yes, it's true. Those of you who have been following our channel for, I guess, a long time, know that at one time, I was ordained as a Buddhist monk. From my point of view, I never considered myself a Buddhist because I could see that the so-called Buddhism religion was degenerate. It was nothing compared to the Buddha's original teaching. Now, what's the difference? Well, it's the difference between a practitioner and an academic. A practitioner is an expert at some practice, like an athlete who can go out and run a four-minute mile, or, you know, a great baseball player who can hit a home run. But the academics are just commenting on the performance of the practitioner. Wow, that was a great home run. Yeah, well, sure was. <laughs> They're just all talk. Whereas the practitioner is the one out there on the field actually doing it. Buddha, Sakyamuni Buddha, was a practitioner of deep meditation. But today's Buddhists are simply scholars. They're just about words, logic, argumentation. And this was a deliberate choice, believe it or not. A, my Buddhist mentor, Nyanananda, told me that about a thousand years ago, there was a debate in the Sangha whether for the best interest of the Buddhists in the future, it would be better to emphasize the practice or the knowledge. And long story short, they chose the knowledge. So Buddhism, the religion, ceased to be about the practice 
of Buddha's instructions, and it became only a discussion about the philosophy. So Buddha was a practitioner. When he spoke about nothingness, he was saying, in effect, if you perform this uh, Upanishadic meditation, neti neti, huh? and the Buddha's jhanas, the eight jhanas, are nothing but neti neti in practice, then you will reach a point where there is nothing, or at least there appears to be nothing. Now, this is common sense, and it's also our experience, that if you sit and meditate long enough on emptiness, uh, neti neti, not this, not that, not this body, not this kosha, not these elements, not this dimension, not time, not space, not nothing. You will reach shunya, the void. Now, the void is not exactly nothing. Uh, it's the absence of things. But there's still space, there's still time. There is still the possibility of a manifestation. But the one thing about the void is that when you realize it, Brahman appears spontaneously within it. And it's very easy from that point of view to realize Brahman. Why? Well, who or what is experiencing the void? Huh? I ask this of my Buddhist friends, and they can't answer. They're just dumbstruck, lost. Huh? Because their philosophy does not cover it, that the fact of experience is due to the presence of Brahman, a positive entity which is the source of consciousness and self-awareness. So even if you reject everything else and it's all gone and you're apparently in emptiness, shunyata, the self is still there. So the self is that which is constant in all states, whether living or dead or in between, whether asleep, awake, doesn't matter. You are the self. You are Brahma. And all this other stuff is simply the contents of consciousness. So if you erase the contents of consciousness, you're left with apparently nothing but actually the self. This is the realization that I had after practicing Buddha's instructions for, I don't know, five or six years. That led to fourth path realization. And that's the end of it. You can't go any further. That's our hunt. That's the real thing. But again, the Buddhists mistake this our hunt state as simply a nothing. Uh, that one does not exist anymore. That means they actually haven't found it. They actually haven't experienced it. And they're going on reason alone. Like that purport said, they see the truth with the single eye of inference. So by inference, you can say, if you see nothing, there is nothing. But that's not the case. Who is seeing the nothing? <laughs> the poor Buddhists, I mean, they're really up a tree. They can be so easily defeated because their so-called logic and inference is based on a false observation that when you experience nothing, there is nothing. Anyway, Brahman <laughs> is fearless because there is no other. Brahman alone truly exists. Everything else is just a picture show. It's just illusion, maya. 
It is just a temporary manifestation. This far, the Buddhists got it right, that the illusory creation exists only during a certain amount of time. It's created and then it's destroyed, gone, finished. But what they don't understand is that it's not based on nothing because nothing cannot be a substrate. Think of anything that's an illusion, the rope and the snake, the, the water in the desert, uh, the apparency of land on the ocean. These are all based on a substrate. The substrate of the snake is the rope. The substrate of the water is the desert, specifically the refraction of the sun's light. Without the sun's light, there is no illusion. So that is the substrate. And in the ocean, the clouds over the horizon are the substrate of the vision of a city or land in the sky or in the distance on the ocean. There is always a real substrate to any illusion. Similarly, in the reality of the universe, the creation, Brahman is the substrate, and everything else is projected on Brahman. That is the real nature of Maya, and that is why realization of Brahman is the freedom that leads to complete fearlessness. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.